I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? We're about to know the review. There's another paid request, this time f from Smack It Down. And for those interested in requesting pretty much anything, whether it be a topic, reaction, commentary, review, re review, randomness, out of the blueness, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit that whole title in the damn... I'll try. Should be fine. But this probably has the longest title in movie history. Now, the film came out. It did decent at the box office. And I keep thinking this is directed by Tina and Ivory Wayans, but it's not. It's directed by a guy named Paris Barkley. But, with that said, the only other thing I can find this guy directing is episodes of TV I wonder if Teen, Teen and Every Williams I wonder if he kind of ghost directed this because it does have that feel of what Teenan would do before I'm going to get you sucker after with Steery Movie Steery Movie 2 you know not only just it being a parody but it has that same feel that same flavor and, by the way, this special edition is bullshit. I'm going to rant a bit about this. Because it's a fun movie. It's a fun comedy. It's entertaining. Not all the jokes work, but that is most parodies. But there's a lot of fun stuff, especially Marlon Wayans' show as Look Dog. But this special edition is bullshit. It's the unrated version. You don't have both versions. So... I don't know if this has a Blu-ray. The unready material didn't really add much note. All I can remember the difference is being different. There's one bit where this character has like a three, four minute session on Def Comedy Jam. Try to do stand-up. I think there's an added scene where the grandma cuts someone's head off. I don't think that was in the original version, but she like she does that at the end after doing her dead president's nod with the makeup, and then she like cuts someone's head off and puts it in a bag. I went, I don't remember that. Cause it's been a while since I've seen the film. I remember seeing the theatrical theatrical cut more than this. Uh, this I found is it was cheap. Like I said, I don't know if this is on Blu-ray, but this special dish is bullshit. There's no commentary. There's no updated features. There's one whole fucking deleted scene. One whole deleted scene. One. Not two or ten. One. Hood movie Dumbo is nothing. The Wayne's Brothers behind the scenes is three minutes. Little featurette back to the day. And here's the thing. The only people that in those three minutes is Sean, Marlon, and Keenan talking about the film. Not the director.
In fact, I don't think I ever see the director within those three minutes. And you see a bit where Tienan is directing the actors. Tienan is telling the actors, oh, you know, you're going too fast, you're turning too fast. And Tienan was a producer. That sound, that looks like something and sounds like something that a director would do to direct the actors. And Paris Barkley's name is never mentioned. That granted, it's only three minutes long. But Sean and Marlon Wayans are talking about Tienan and what Tienan does. So, again, if it came to light that Tienan ghost directed this, maybe there's something where maybe he was doing another film. This is 96. I try to remember. I didn't. Maybe there's something too where he, he technically couldn't direct it or he could, but he could put his name on it. I don't know the details. There's nothing much for features on here for a fucking collector series, which is bullshit. Anyway, getting to the film itself, it's a fun parody. It's a fun parody, of course, of films, mostly from the title. Uh, I would say most of the parody is about menace to society. There's a little bit of Boys in the Hood, Juice, the, the term is brought up, Dead Presidents, which has Chris Tucker and such. Uh, they That pops up one time when the grandma's wearing the makeup that you see in the trailers and the, the poster of Dead Presidents. And it's also in the movie. Higher Learning with Omar Epps. In fact, Omar Epps' character Malik makes an appearance. So it's a nod to Higher Learning, that film. But it's mostly menace to society. With dealing with the woman, the woman getting pregnant, the whole ending where there's the shootout and Sean Waynes has to save this kid and the whole bit of menace to society where the the character that Marlon Wayans is parodying, they're in a shop, what do you say about my mama? And then Menace to Society tells the store owners here, it's of course much more funny. As it meant to be funny. Uh, by this point, uh, Sean and Marlon Wayans, they had their TV show, The Wayans Brothers. I'm trying to remember if that was on, I want to say the WB Network. I could be wrong. Now, before that, they had been in some films here and there. A little bit of In Living Color, at least with Kenny and Ivory Wayans. And... I'm going to get you sucker Teen Everyone's did in the 80s, which was more of a parody of Blasportation films. And in the way Teen Everyone's talked about in that three minutes, it seemed like, hey, it was a time to do a parody on all these movies coming out, these hood films. I didn't. It's like, are you sure you didn't direct this film, Teen? Uh, one thing right off the bat that was noteworthy is they do this title card, which is meant to be a joke, but it's just weird in retrospect. One in every five people are shot in the theater while watching this. Of course, after what happened, The Dark Knight Rises, that's a bit eh. But that's not the movie's fault. It's just like, eh. <laughs> that That's a joke that doesn't really hold up the best, because there have been shoot, shootouts in a movie theater. But there's a lot of clever moments in this. Near the beginning, when you have the guy who comes in, talking to the camera, and then he gets shot. Then, no, this is about my story. Then he gets shot. And there's before that saying, oh, you know, people don't live until their 21st birthday. And then some guy goes, happy birthday, homie. Happy birthday, homeboy. All right. <laughs> and then, I think it's actually one of the Wayne's brother's sisters comes in oh my god oh my god wait ma'am this ain't your baby what ain't that some shit <laughs> and walks away the, the actors are committed to what they're doing even when some of the jokes don't work even when some of the jokes it seem like the movie kind of stops just for this thing to happen and then continues like there's a bit where the movie just stops for Marlon Wayans and these two guys to play kind of a more urban version of Monopoly which is 
slightly humorous, but it does feel like the movie just stops for like two, three minutes and then continues. But Sean Wayans comes back into the hood. His mom drops him by saying lines like, you know what, if you don't get an education, you could be working bodyguard for Eddie Murphy. The fact that Sean Wayans dad is younger than him, which is a, I guess maybe this is take on how some people in these movies were cast to be a lot young. The age doesn't really track, I guess, in some of these castings. And so again, the, the dad is younger than him. Listen, when you're here, you're organized by Sega Genesis games. <laughs> you have the one guy that was in some of these hood films where, I'll suck your dick. Get out of here, man. Now, I don't do this anymore, but there was a time in my videos where if it was a very preachy movie, it was a very in-your-face-with-a-message movie, I would do this thing where I would do in the video, I'd go, message, message. That's stolen from this. Because I, I thought it was, one of my favorite jokes, I thought it was fucking hilarious, I still do, is that they know that in a lot of these hood films, they would have this piece of dialogue that's supposed to be very noteworthy. And so, for example, Sean Williams goes, you know, we're not slaves anymore, but yet we're slaves in the mind. And then Keen Ivor Wayans comes by because he's the mailman and he just looks at the camera and goes, message, and then walks off. I just thought that was straightforward but hilarious. And he goes, uh, Sean Wayans goes sees his cousin, who is Marlon Wayans. And like I said, this guy steals the movie. Like, you look at his face... And it's all the, the facial reactions and what do you say about my mama? Like he's committed to it and I thought his character comedic was written fairly well. He's got the weird hair, even his armpit hair is braided. There's moments in him that shine. Like, these guys keep pulling up bigger guns. And so then Marlon pulls out a fucking nuclear missile. Do we have a problem? You better get out go nuclear holocaust on your ass. Or he's asking, what looks better? The Uzi with the low tops? Okay, I'll just take these. And he puts, like, bunny slippers on. Uh, there's the him getting pissed at the Asian store owners, and now that I am, because when I first saw this, I didn't know shit about Menace to Society. Now that I've seen that film, it makes the movie even funnier to see those scenes, like knowing the context fully, and then seeing the comedy version. Yeah, I just see that the if there's one movie they took the most out of, it was Menace to Society probably why Menace is the, the first part of it. I mean, one of my other favorite bits is this bit here where they're at a party and you know, Marley's talking to Sean. Oh, you know, I'm going to ask her my number. Let's see how this goes. So he goes off and he's like, Break yourself. I said, give me your goddamn number. And he puts the dunder head and then as she, he leaves, then she puts the gun on him. Wait a fucking minute. What do you think you'd do? You'd come up here. And so, the keep going. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, no, no. Nine the jewels. One, two, three. The each time they do one, two, three, they're both putting their guns in a different portion. You know, fuck it. Fine, we'll dance like this. And they're dancing with <laughs> like this with the, the guns to their heads. I, I forgot about that scene and it made me laugh my ass off. Just the weird insanity of it, but yet you buy this character doing that. Like, it seems understandable for this character to do that. It just. And, like, Marlon Wayans was committed to, to, do, to this part. Oh, one thing I gotta mention before I forget there's a quick. Um, it's a visual dad. 
where on a billboard there's a Back to the Future parody called Black to the Hood and the tagline's like he was late for his parole he was he I forget the the tagline but I think it was like Black to the Hood part 6 or something but it's like a parody of Back to the Future that's another thing I forgot about it I said the 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 they go into the store and you have the white guy that fucking steals the whole store and the owners don't care but they're honed in on the the black guys so kind of, you know, kind of like a nice you know comedic take on stereotypes and stuff and of course the white guy's the man and apparently he framed like Michael Jackson and Tupac and all this stuff it's the man He's really good. Like there's a, there are. I will say this is one of those movies. There are times that seem like almost little sketch moments, kind of stitched together with barely a story. Like there's certain little moments that are very separate that's not really brought up before or after. Like the Monopoly game. Like Sean Williams needs to do a driver's test. So you have this guy with the glasses, he's, he's very sophisticated, and if you see enough movies, you kind of, you might know where this is going, and lo and behold, they stop at a bank, and of course, he robs it, he's like, get out of here, motherfucker, let's go. We never, nothing ever comes of it, that guy never comes back, there's never any talk of a robbery again, just how it is, like, it's never brought up again. It's like that scene could have been almost anywhere in the picture. <laughs> but it's a parody. You're not looking for. You're usually not looking for a concrete story at a parody. You just hope that it makes you laugh enough. And this did. Like I said the actors. The other characters. You have this one called Crazy Legs. Who's very diggly. And he's in a wheelchair. And he has a dream sequence. Like he wants to be MC Hammer. But because of his legs, he's on wires having to do the hammer time. Hammer time. Whoa, whoa. You have this one guy named Preach who's very hypocritical where we, the white man take all the stuff. The white man do this. But then he'll only want to date white women. <laughs> or he hates using the N-word, but you'll use... A derogatory word against Asians. So again, one of those like, like a very hypocritical person. One of your villains is this guy who's. He keeps believing that he's in prison, so he keeps acting like he's in prison. Bernie Mac, may rest in peace, makes an appearance as this racist black cop. Which I try to remember what movie was that from? Was that in Menace to Society or was that in Boys in the Hood? I can't remember. What that part's referencing. I don't know what parts of the movie is referencing South Central. Uh, I don't remember much about South Central, honestly. So if anyone who's a big South Central fan, if you know like what parts of this is referencing that, you let me know. But uh, I forgot Omar Omar Epps was in it. I'm like, oh cool, Omar Epps from Juice. And like he was in Higher Learning. I mean, Malik, always the same character name. And it's a total nod. Okay. And like I said, not all the parts work. Like, there's a bit with him and this girl having sex. And it's supposed to be tinky sex. So there's a point where, like, she puts cheese on his chest. He's like, ah, ah. Or... He's going to lick her feet, but it's not that good. So he puts a bunch of hot sauce on it. Eh, kind of fell flat for me. Like, that's one of those scenes that, okay, if I cut stuff out, that'd be like, okay, we can edit that out. I just didn't find anything funny. I could see why the Deaf Comedy Jam segment was cut out of the theatrical cut. Because I guess it's Marlon Wayans as his character doing like a stand-up routine. About how big a woman's pussy is. I'm not offended by that. It just wasn't really that funny. And I can see why that was cut out in the original version. Because it didn't really. It 
it's funny this is 89 minutes but that's the theatrical cut and it doesn't have the theatrical cut on here it's just the the unrated edition because the unrated edition is like an hour and 35 minutes but this says it's an hour and 29 minutes so i just they got that running time wrong yeah all news bonus features barely jack shit for features come on now at least have a commentary on there with Marlon and Sean talking about the film with Keenan. So I just said they, not all the jokes work, but there's enough that works. Like there's a good line where Sean is talking to the kid. He's like, all the rappers are taking all the good acting jobs. <laughs> there's a lot of these, you know, there was a time where you had Ice Cube and Ice T and all these guys getting all these jobs. Some of them in higher pro profile movies or TV shows. Um, so I, I thought that was a pretty clever line that very applicable, especially for the time. Uh, another one is, I believe this is a moment. I can't remember if it was a men's society or boys in the hood. Might have been boys in the hood where you had the character kind of doing these I can't take any more. He's going crazy. But here Sean Wayne's is accidentally knocking his girlfriend's kids. She's she's got like seven kids. He keeps accidentally knocking them out one by one. And they're just like, What are you doing? I'm trying to win an award for the, the Soul Soul Train Awards. I oh whatever the, I forget what the awards was, but like he did a much better job than I did. Again, the ending was fine. The ending is like a nod to Mensa Society, but like, I like that Sean Williams has to go through this almost big obstacle course to save the kid. I was almost waiting for like the American Gladiators soundtrack. Dun, 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 dun. Which I do think that was done better on Hot Shots Part 2 a few years before. Maybe American Gladiators was not as prominent. In uh, 1996, as it was in Hot Chest Park Dua. But, you know, it does that thing at the spoiler alert, I did, I did mention spoiler, it does that thing at the end where they go through what the characters are doing, and pretty much everyone works out fine. Like, you know, Marlon Wayans went to Death Comedy Jam, uh, Sean married the girl, the preach guy sold out with a white girl. The one guy made it, not to be MC Hammer, but like ballet or something. You know, so it didn't pull anything stupid or anything like out of the blue tone wise. Because sometimes a parody can do that. I like student bodies from back in the day. One of the few issues is like the last 10 minutes kind of. It's still a comedy, but it kind of felt like they just ran out of ideas and kind of gave up. And so, like, the the final, like I said, five, ten minutes of student bodies just really isn't that funny or clever compared to the rest. They just kind of, like, they threw their hands up. And so does that have, like, even the first Steary movie. I liked Steary movie, but the ending where pretty much everyone's dead and one gets hit by the car. I went, yeah, really? Was it just like, ah, oh, fuck it, just think of something. I didn't feel that was the case in this. I w so, it makes it a bit more of a satisfying ending. And, like I said, enough jokes were that make it rather funny. I don't want to tell every single one of them to ruin it for people who haven't seen it. I do wish there was actual special features. In case you're wondering, this is what the inside looks like, and I didn't realize. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fun. I didn't realize that. that wow, Mirror Max, this is like a kick in the balls. Okay, so don't be a menace, right? Sean, Marlon, Teen Avery Williams. This is the chapter list. Guess what's advertised behind it? 
Yeah, the film that you guys didn't make and we pretty much stole because you guys wanted too much money. You know, they were they kind of deserved a bit, a little bit of a raise. Because usually that's what happens with any other people making a sequel. No, we don't steal your shit. And then we will rewrite it and make a shitty movie. And then this is an updated version of that shitty movie. And then you got shittier and shittier. And we're going to advertise it right behind your old movie that we also own. That's like, that's like a fuck you. Like, hey, remember when we stole your shit? Ha ha, here's the advertise on your shit. Fuck. I know some people like steer movie 3. I think it's a pile of fucking shit. It got worse. Four and five are worse, but I still think Steer Movie 3 is a pile of shit. Just my opinion. And Charlie Sheen looks like he's on celebrity rehab. But. Yeah. Don't be a menace. Fun comedy. If you like parodies, if you like Teen and Ivory's films, like. And. I would say also what's nice about this, it doesn't hone in too much on fart jokes and you know, that kind of stuff as much as say the, the scary movie films. So like the raunch is kept minimal compared to those. Although once in a while there's like a random bit, like there's a random like exorcist bit where Marlon Wayans is with this girl and then she's possessed. Her, her head changes into a demon. What, what the hell did she say? Like. Alright motherfucker. Let's get it on. I just thought like. That's weird having this in a parody about hood movies. Like this is a. About. You know boys in the. It's just weird to throw in like a. I don't know if it's supposed to be exorcist. Like it just. Very out of the blue. Like, well, I imagine if Team Con out of the blue came out, or like, what is this going into a again a parody of hood films? I just that seemed a bit out of the blue. Like, where did this come from? I mean, it doesn't last long, but it's like okay, the possessed girl wants to have sex with Marlon Wayans. That sounds like something more for scary movie than this, but but it was still a funny scene, so. I guess I'm not too mad about it. I just like, okay. Like I said, I don't think I, this made a little bit of money, but it, it wasn't like a big, huge hit, but you, it w made a profit. Obviously, it did because they released this version. And, you know, the fact that. <clears throat> This is Miramax, and you know who owns them, Harvey and Bob Weinstein. So, I don't even know who owns the Miramax library today. I don't know for sure. I should know. I, is it Lionsgate or is it something else? I don't know. Because this is still the, the Miramax logo, which then became, then it was the Weinstein Company, and then, you know, both of them can go fuck themselves. Anyway, it's, it's fun comedy, entertaining. Check it out if you guys haven't seen it. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.